So a couple days ago I installed the uh, AutoCast C5 Lite SE which is a Apple CarPlay head unit designed specifically for motorcycles. I've been looking at it for a long time. I was also thinking about doing the Garmin Zumo XT. But I actually felt like the CarPlay head has a much greater benefit than the Zumo does, than the Garmin does. The Garmin is simply a GPS. Well, I'm getting all the functionality of GPS through the unit through my phone via Bluetooth. But in addition to GPS, of course, the CarPlay head unit handles music and calls and all of that sort of thing. And even though the screen is not huge, it's a it's a five inch screen, the icons are much bigger and simpler. So for any of you familiar with you know Apple CarPlay, you're aware of the fact that the layout is just more intuitive on a CarPlay unit than it is on your phone, where you're dealing with very small icons on a fast moving bike. So, had ran into a couple of hiccups installing. Uh, not so much the uh, the wiring because it plugs directly into uh, USB, but the main issue was the mounting. So apparently there are two models of the AutoCast. There's the AutoCast C5 Lite and the Lite SE. C5 Lite SE. Well, the C5 Lite, which costs a little bit more, I want to say about $50 more, comes with a, a ram mount option, has a ball mount in the back, which makes the possibilities of mounting lim uh, 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 limitless. I mean, literally limitless. You can put a ball mount anywhere. I have a ball mount holding my phone. I have a ball mount on my cup holder. The C5 Lite SE, however, only gives the option of a bar mount, but not only just a bar mount, but a non-swiveling mount. So you would actually need a bar that comes straight across in order to mount that. The interesting thing is it advertises that it's compatible with any motorcycle. Well, AutoCast, I hate to break the, be the bearer of bad news and break the news to you, but this GL1500 had no application for your mount. None. There was no place I could put it on this bike. I removed the uh, phone holder, thinking maybe I can get it up there, even though I didn't want it there. I ideally wanted it centered. But even with the, uh, even with the phone holder removed, there was no place to, the mount is fat. And I have the clutch reservoir on the flat part of the bar. And if I were to mount it to the side of the bar, there's no way of leveling it, so the whole screen would be crooked. So I had to MacGyver a mounting system to keep it here on the center of the, essentially it's on the plastics in the cockpit over the fuel tank. So just know that if you have a GL1500 and you are exploring the uh, AutoCast Apple CarPlay head, I would highly suggest you go with the C5 Lite and not the C5 Lite SE. Now functionality is terrific. I mean, it works great. It's bright, even in direct sunlight, I can see the screen. The function is all very good. And the way it works, because this is one of the things I was wondering and researching but couldn't get any answers to, is everything still goes through your phone. Don't do it, dummy. So I thought there was the possibility that it would go from the phone to the AutoCast and then to your Bluetooth uh, helmet. In my case, I have a Sena. Sena, however you say it. But you have the option of having everything come through the phone. So essentially, all my controls on the helmet still work. Just like they would without the AutoCast. The AutoCast just accepts the, the Bluetooth broadcast for all the visuals. The map, 
um, you know, all the apps. Waze, if I want to use Waze, or Wise, I'm sorry. Um, Apple Music. You know, whatever it is that I'm using, essentially all this is is to is an interface for apps. But all the controls on my helmet function the exact same way. They go direct to the phone. That's fantastic. Because I know on some of them, that is not the case. It goes from the phone into the unit, and then from the unit into the Bluetooth headset. And I have heard about lag, uh, audio quality issues with those. So I was happy to not have to do that. So, so far, real happy with this. Um, it's bright, easy to see. I actually have the brightness turned up too much right now. I've noticed that, and that, that's maybe the one complaint I do have about it. It should have some kind of an auto-dimming feature at night. Because if you want to go down to, say, 50% at night, you have to manually set the brightness down to 50%. I'm wearing some gloves right now that don't have touchscreen capability. So I'm not able to do that. But even my phone, I have a little too bright right now. So just is what it is. But at 100% during the day, the screen is easily readable. I mean, the, uh, the resolution isn't, isn't going to knock your socks off. You know, it's nothing to write home about, but it's acceptable. It's usable. At nighttime, it'll do whatever your phone is doing. So if your phone is in night mode or dark mode, it'll go down into dark mode with it. And it's perfect at night, especially when it's dimmed down about 50%. You're not getting this kind of glare. So I do prefer having it a little bit toned down at night. I just forgot to do it while I was backing out of the garage this morning. I backed down a hill to get out of my garage. And it requires my full attention. So I kind of got sidetracked. A little chilly this morning, probably about, uh, oh, I don't know, 45 degrees or so. Not terrible, a little bit chilly. But I've really been enjoying riding into work. I got my heated liner. So this is just a, this is just a liner. This is by Venture Gear. It's just a jacket liner. It's meant to go under a jacket. I have it on high and I'm not wearing a jacket over it. And in 45 degree temperatures, that's perfect not cold at all 72 miles an hour and I'm very very comfortable this way so I know that cycle gear has put out a line of heated gear and this this wires right into my bike I plug it in there's a plug by my seat and I plug it right in I know uh, cycle gear has come out with a line called hot wired I have no personal experience with it but I see a lot of people are using it and same concept and about the same cost because um, I think for the pants and jacket and the pants are of course wired to heated too the venture gear was around 400 bucks and then I got some glove liners which were a hundred I want to say I did look up the jacket because my wife uh, did not get gear she doesn't ride a lot during the winter time she didn't want to spend the money but I looked at the hot wire jacket and that was around $200. So probably pretty comparable in course in price to the Venture Gear. So we'll be picking that up for a shortly. And hopefully the hot wired works just as well. I mean, I have never worn a coat over this. It hasn't been cold enough uh, for me to put a coat over it. But I would imagine that with a coat, it's got to be very warm. It's very warm without the coat. So with a coat, I'm thinking you'd be quite toasty. The coat na naturally trapping the heat. You know, this is not... This is not a very heavy jacket. So anyway, AutoCast C5 Lite SE, thumbs up from me. Just understand that if you're mounting it, if you don't have a straight bar on your handlebars, 
if all your bars are curved and you can't get it up high onto the bar like on this Goldwing GL 1500 you are gonna have to figure out an alternative way to mount so that is the downside but as far as function goes once you do get it mounted the unit is excellent I would imagine the C5 Lite, meaning not the SE, that's the other one, which mounts a total different way. That's the ball mount uh, model. Would give you even more flexibility. And you could actually mount that up where my phone is. I don't know how much better that is. Uh, you know, you're, it's hard to kind of use your fingers on a moving bike. So I don't know if there's any advantage to having it up on the handlebar. It would be a little bit closer. And because the screen is not particularly big, it's probably about the size of my phone. Maybe a little bit smaller. <coughs> Excuse me. But as far as the functionality and what it, what it gives you, as far as being able to have your maps running full-time and have other things running on your phone, like my Fobo my uh, wheel pressure gauges and my uh, digital speedometer and even though I do have a speedometer up there or my battery tracker I can use all those apps on the phone and dedicate this to navigation that's the real advantage of the AutoCast so thumbs up AutoCast we'll see how it stands the test of time but so far good product that works as advertised but does not mount as advertised keep forgetting my bike cover I want to start covering this bike you know this bike is parked under a bunch of pine trees and the sap from the pine trees just makes a mess I have a big cover that fits this bike I just keep forgetting to put it in a saddlebag road in here. There's my friend the raccoon. I see him every morning. The last couple days. Must be into the garbage pail. I mean, here's traffic coming down here and he kind of runs off into the woods. Always a little creepy getting off the bike back here because I always worry about bear. You know, this is Florida. Florida back black bear not particularly aggressive, but I would never even know it was out there. See how pitch black it is back here. And we do get plenty of deer back here. So, if you, you know, we're close to the St. John's River. So if you have deer, you can absolutely have bear. All right. Well, honey, we're home. 